dreams just random images fired from an unconscious brain during sleep? Or something much more important, like life-saving inner guidance? How dreams can be healing and early warning tools for disease, financial crisis, or success. And love is still one of the behavioral science's greatest unanswered questions. Hello, I'm your host, author Kat O'Keefe Cannabis. Welcome to Dreaming Healing, where dreams and cutting edge scientific research meet on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network. Dreaming Healing is every Tuesday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern with live shows on the first and third evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific when you can call in and ask Kat questions about your amazing dreams. Talk on air. Call toll-free 833-220-1200. That's 833-220-1200. Come live your dreams out loud with Kat. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision 7. Radio Network. I'm your host, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, but hey, my friends all call me Kat, so I hope you will too. Uh, you're watching Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network out of Boston, Massachusetts. So we're going to be talking tonight about writing your memoir, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. And our guests are going to be <laughs> Teresa Velarde, who is a publisher, and Tammy Hader. Hatter, I keep calling her Hader because I had a girlfriend no. in first grade whose last name was Hader. It's Hatter. It's Hader. She. It is Hader. It is Hader. It is Hader. I've been calling you Hatter, thinking that it wasn't <laughs> supposed to be Hader. <laughs> Right, that's going to make life so much easier for me now. Good. As long as you don't curl this girl oh. late for dinner, she's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tammy Hader uh, wrote a oh. memoir, and we're going to be not not so much focused on the memoir itself in the show tonight. What we're going to be focusing on is writing a memoir. So all of you authors out there, all of you writers, everyone who has a story to tell, and there's so many, you want to make sure that you watch this show because we're going to go back into how do you make a memoir work? Uh, writing your memoir, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you are only listening to us right now on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, if you're only listening to Dreaming Healing and you'd like to see us you'd like to see tammy you'd like to see Teresa. you'd like to see what the book looks like when she holds it up you can go to my website <laughs> just tap type in to google cat the queen of dreams or you can type in my whole name kathleen o'keefe cannabis k-a-t-h-l-e-e-n-o-k-e-e-f-e-k-a N is in Nancy, A, V is in Victor, O, S, as in Sam, dot com. It'll bring up my website. If you look at the top of the website, you'll see all these little black tabs, buttons. The second one from the left, you'll see Dream Vision 7 Radio. Click it. It'll take you to my website on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, my dreaming healing page. You'll see my face up there. And if you look down the little ways, you'll see a little TV with cute little antennae coming off of it. Click that. Boom. You get to watch us. You get to see what we're talking about. So tonight we're going to be talking about why are memoirs so important and why are memoirs so loved? Memoir writing is a skill that actually combines Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey with cathartic, joyful, and painful memories and emotions. And you need all those in there. Word Empowered Book Endeavors, We Be Books publisher, Teresa Velarde, and memoir author, Tammy Hader, share their secrets to successfully writing a memoir. Anybody can write a memoir. How do you make it successful so that it sells to more people than your mom, dad, and best friend? <laughs> that's a skill. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. But first, let's do our clearing 
and protection meditation. This is a meditation I did every single night. I was going through chemotherapy and radiation therapy through all three of my breast cancers. And I have to tell you, I really believe it helped keep me safe, keep me healthy when I was going through a very difficult time. And I still do it every single night. So what we're gonna do for those of you who are new is you're just gonna get comfortable in your chair, feel yourself sinking deep into the chair and just follow my voice and follow my directions, okay? Close your eyes, take a deep breath in, hold it. Imagine any negativity you may have picked up this week going into that breath of life. Blow it out across the room into the purple flame of Saint Germain that is way out in front of you. See it converted into beautiful golden light, returning to the universe, going up beyond the moon, the clouds, the stars, making us a, a U-turn when it gets to those pearly gates, coming back down and entering your seventh chakra, your crown chakra, and filling your whole body with golden healing light all the way down from your nose to your toes. Again, deep breath in. Any negativity that someone or said to you or something you saw, catch it in that breath of life. Blow it out into the purple flame of Saint Germain where it goes back up through the universe, makes that U-turn and comes right back into your seventh crown chakra, fills your whole body. You can feel the warmth going through your whole body from your nose to your toes. One more time, really deep breath in. Fill your lungs to the bottom. Any negative memory from your childhood, is caught in that breath of life. Blow it out, gone into the purple flame of Saint Germain where it's converted into beautiful energy one more time, up into the universe, coming around and filling your whole body with warm golden light. Now imagine holding in your hand your power gift. A power gift is anything that is love and powerful to you. Your favorite flower, your favorite piece of jewelry, your favorite stone. Imagine holding it in your hand and swinging it all around your body to create a mirrored bubble around you, a protective mirrored bubble that can only have anything that, that brought into you by your spirit guides and your guardian angels. Only the highest and best can be brought into that bubble by your guides. Everything else is reflected right back from whence it came. Not touching you. We wish it so. And therefore it is. When you're ready, very slowly open your eyes, start to feel yourself coming back into your body. And just listen to my voice. Teresa Velarde, Authentic Endeavors publisher, a hybrid publisher, came to life when founder Teresa Velarde decided to use her gifts to help others tell their stories in books. As an editor and author herself, she wanted to make it possible for others to benefit from the experience of seeing their words published in a book. Imagine that. First, it was short stories written by several authors compiled together. Then it was individual authors who wanted to either fulfill a dream of writing a book or had a story that was so compelling that it just begged to be told. The Weeby Books Publishing Imprint is a collaborative effort with Cat Cannabis, an award-winning author and good friend of Teresa's, 
They have worked together on several other projects and decided to bring something new to the publishing world. Together, they are We Be Books, aka Word Empowered Book Endeavors. And that's at webebookspublishing.com. For those of you who um, want to, you can go to my uh, Dream, Dream Vision 7 Radio Network website, Dreaming Healing website. Again, using that button on my website up there in the top, the second one from the left, the little black button. If you go there, this bio, this bio will be on there and the link for the publishing company will be on there. You just click it. It will take you right to webebookspublishing.com. It will take you to authenticendeavorspublishing.com. It will take you to dreamvision7radio.com, conversations that make a difference, which is a radio slash TV show that Teresa Velarde is also a host on. And our second guest is Tammy Hader, and she is a memoir author and editor for Medium's Journal of Journeys. BizCat 360 columnist and daily gift book contributing author. She has an accounting in BBA from Wichita State University, yet after a 30 year accounting career, she reinvented herself as a writer in 2018. <laughs> so when she's not writing, she enjoys caring for her mom, cooking for her family, and serving her two rescue kittens with the royal attention they deserve. And you can learn more about her at T-A-M-M-Y-H-A-D-E-R dot com. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hey, good to be here, Kat. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's start with you, Teresa. Okay. Teresa, what makes We Be Books Publishing, Word Empowered Book Endeavors, different from other publishing companies? And what types of manuscripts are accepted for publication? Um, we Be Books is a, a collaborative effort between the two of us, of course. Um, we um, take people's stories, books, collections of stories, as is Tammy's case with our, her um her incredible folk walking old roads um, with all of these stories that create her memoir, which is, this is awesome. you got to get this. It's on Amazon. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. So what we do is we take the, we take the book and we edit it. We professionally format it. We have some coaching that goes along with our program and we really help people to be put in the best light possible between the covers of the book including the covers of the book. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it's, it's a collaborative effort and we have um, several, several different genres of books that we will, um, we will use. We've done business books. We have, of course, this, um, this memoir and also our friend Mark, Mark O'Brien has his, um, one of his books on there. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's called Random Thoughts, a Writer's Notebook. That's there as well. So basically we're looking for people who um, are authors who, have, who either have been in the past or have not been published. We are open to manuscripts in every genre except for the occult and pornography and anything that anything that would make your hair curl is not part of our our our, uh, <laughs> our book <laughs> collection. Um, if your eyes are bulging out of your head and you're mm. like, "What the heck? Who had the nerve to put this on the page? It doesn't belong to us." So that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we we have a wide range of people, and you can just go to webebookspublishing.com or authenticendeavorspublishing.com, and you can see the variety of books that we have out there. And yours is welcome to be looked at as well as a possible publication for our company. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I think one of the things that makes our company a little different than most other uh, 
publishing houses and publishing companies is the publishing companies. And, and I've been published. Um, I, I did a hybrid published book. My book, Dreams That Can Save Your Life, is conventionally published through Inner Traditions and distributed by Simon & Schuster. So I've been through all of them. And they they promise, oh, yes, we're, we're, we're going to help you every step of the way. We'll be holding your hand. You won't, you know, everything's going to be great. And I got to tell you, they don't. <laughs> they really don't. Yet Teresa and I make sure that our authors uh, are have guidance throughout the process. We we uh, coach them um, monthly and more often than that if we need to, and we make sure that they're successful. Because if they're not successful, we're, we're not, not successful, yeah. and um, we don't like to fail. You know, we haven't so far and we're not going to. So, uh, Tammy, mm -hmm. let me ask you, how did you find Ruby Books Publishing? How did that happen? Uh, that happened through Mark O'Brien, actually. I had met him on Biz Catalyst 360 and we had become friends, long distance friends. And I was talking to him about my book project and and that I was looking for an agent or a publishing company or something to help me out with that. And he uh, he said that he was having a book done mm -hmm. through Weeby Books. And he, uh, he said he would let me use him as a reference in my query letter to you guys. And that's, that's how I found you. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, you, we, we are all in Biz Catalyst 360 magazine, mm -hmm. an online magazine with Dennis Patoko. And so really, Teresa and uh, Teresa, you and I have most of the the um, the books that we've done together have come from recommendations from other people. They yeah. they mm -hmm. really liked what we did to help them. They liked the mm -hmm. way we held their hand, made sure that they were successful. And we it's not like we're out there spending millions of dollars on advertising. We just okay. sit back and uh, the right people come to us and we are all columnists in Biz Catalyst 360. So Teresa, how long does it typically take for a book to be conventionally published versus Weeby Books hybrid? Oh my goodness, uh, for conventional publishing, you could wait a year, 18 months, two years, whatever. Mm -hmm. We we like to get things done and get them done quickly because I know, I mean, and Tammy can speak to this, the anticipation of waiting to actually hold your book in your hands is just, especially for a first time published author, it's like, it's painstaking. Every minute is painstaking until you have that in, in your hands, right? So we, um, we do our very best, our very best to get the job done within a four month period of time, depending on the length of the book, of course, um, and how many things need to uh, be, be done. You know, some people some people have a manuscript and it's it's already been edited, or and we just have to do a, a quick edit through. Um, um, some people have um, some people come to us with really like first drafts, and they need to be really worked on. It depends on on what you need, but the average time for us um, is about um, four months, and that includes the author being involved with you know, deciding on the cover and deciding on um, a variety of different ways that they want to present their book, um, be it uh, paperback or um, ebook or both or, you know, and we, we go through a lot of things with our authors. So um, yeah, about four months is the average time it takes from the time we get the manuscript to the time it's actually available to the public. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are watching the show, I actually interviewed uh, Tammy when her book first came out, when it finally hit the shelves. And uh, we went into detail on the actual subject matter of her book, what she was writing about. And so with this show, what we're gonna be talking about is the challenges of writing a memoir because they're very different from writing a novel or a first person, you know, uh, a nonfiction book. It's different. There, it's a different skill set, and so that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, on this show. But if you would like 
to see Tammy talking about her book when it first hit the shelves, you can go into my archives on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uh, Dreaming Healing, my Dreaming Healing website, and just go over to where it says archives, click on that, and uh, you, you can learn a lot more about her book and, and what it's about as far as her memoirs go. So Tammy, um, mm -hmm. let's talk about you now writing your memoir. And so to, to start with, can you hold your book up right next to your, to your face so that, mm -hmm. that we can, you know, have our audience see your book? It's called Walking Old Roads. So Tammy, what is the, fur, the full title of your book? It's Walking Old Roads, A Memoir of Kindness Rediscovered. Right. So how did you come up with the title for your memoir? How that, let's, let's start with that at the very beginning. How'd you come up with that title? And did you have the title before you started writing the book or was it the other way around? Oh, I, I started the write, writing the book first and, and I think this is the third or fourth title that I came up with during the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it was, um, that was hard. Coming up with a title was really hard. You it know, is, right? isn't it? Yeah, it's like almost writing the whole book is almost easier than just coming up with that short little title. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of times, um, you know, when I was doing my books, I would have what I, even when I when I sent my, my um, book proposal out to the publishing houses, I had working title beside mm -hmm. my title. Because as I was going through my, my, my book, as I was writing my book, I would get another title in, and then I would get another title in, and mm -hmm. another title. Finally, at the very end of the book, I found that that was when I came up with my title that was often little parts of every single title I had come up with. Did you uh. find that? Uh, no, actually, I was, I was just kind of brainstorming anything and everything. So they didn't really have to relate to each other. But during the book, I spend a lot of time going down memory lane. So that's where the the road part came in, you know, walking along memory lane. So walking along an old road. And whenever I came up with the title, then I went onto Amazon and, and um, searched for it to make sure that it wasn't used by a hundred other people, and uh, and yeah, the I mean, yeah, yeah the search popped up not very many things. So I thought, okay, that's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that's, that's and then, really smart. We've got yeah. to go to a break, so we're gonna we're gonna hold that thought. We're gonna come back and talk about it again as soon as we uh, uh, the the break is done. You are listening to Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, and I'm your host, Kat Cannabis, and we're talking to Teresa and Tammy today about writing a memoir and how it's different from just writing a nonfiction or a novel. So don't go away. We'll be right back. What if dreams can diagnose your life? What if we can meet the love of our life in dreams? Join host Cat O'Keefe Cannabis, the number one internationally best-selling author of Dreams That Can Save Your Life, written with Duke University medical doctor Larry Burke. Dreaming Healing is where we'll explore dreams, research, and interpret dreams from you, the caller. Dreaming Healing Shows can be heard every Tuesday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern with live shows on the first and third evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Come live your dreams out loud with Cat. Are miracles real? Can you move from mayhem to miracles? 30 prominent authors say yes as they share their high fives and down lows of challenges, abuse, addiction, and love. Experience hope, the magic elixir of miracles, through the personal stories of New York Times best-selling authors James Redfield, Dr. Bernie Siegel, Sister Jenna, Reverend Temple Hayes, and many more. 
If you like bestsellers, chaos to clarity, and crappy to happy, you'll love crying and laughing through Mayhem to Miracles, Sacred Stories of Transformational Hope, available now on Amazon and in bookstores worldwide. Did you know that every word you speak matters? What you say and how you say it can make or break a relationship or shift the outcome of any situation. Are your conversations making a difference? Faith in God, gratitude, authenticity, and giving are Teresa Velarde's heart. It's in this spirit that she's focused on making a difference in the lives she's blessed to touch. Conversations That Make a Difference is now on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network every Tuesday at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Time with live call-in shows every first and third Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. world facing annihilation, a miraculous African nun rises to become the first female pope through a web of war, murder, and betrayal. Loved by some, hated by many, she becomes the deadly target of Islamic terrorists and her own cardinals as she introduces a new vision that will either save humanity or accelerate its destruction. Four people must race against a nuclear holocaust to learn her astonishing secret. Pope Annalisa is available at PeterCanova.com, Amazon, and other online booksellers and bookstores worldwide. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. Welcome back to Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. I am your host, Kat Cannabis, and uh, we are talking to Teresa Velarde and Tammy Hayter today about publishing and writing a memoir, because memoirs, believe it or not, are one of the highest selling books. I don't remember the exact statistics, but it blew me away. When I saw, I know that they have gone up 25%. More people than ever before are ordering memoirs online. And I believe that it's because challenges love company. I don't want to say misery loves company, but that's kind of what it is also. When you're going through a challenge in your life, and, uh, you know, this was in some of the books that Teresa and I wrote together, um, it's great to share your challenge, but what's even better is how you came through that storm and came out the other side, a better person for having gone through it. What did you learn and how can you share that with the reader? Well, Tammy did that. And that's kind of what we want to talk about now. Um, Tammy, what mm -hmm. did you actually find that was most challenging about writing your memoir? We were talking about the challenge of just coming up with the title. Now, what did you find that was really challenging about writing the memoir? Well, there were several things, um, partially because it started out as just an essay collection, just a personal essay collection. So the whole book evolved from that. Um, and I had done some research and, and talked to a former literary agent and, and found out that memoir is, is more sellable than personal essays. So then I had to go back in and take those personal essays and revamp them a little bit so that I would have a thread, a, a theme, going through each of them. So they were independent stories, but I had to tie them together somehow mm -hmm. and add dialogue. And I'd never written dialogue before. So that was really hard. And I still don't think I'm really all that good at it. But. You were great. I, I love the dialogue <laughs> in your book. It was excellent. You did. I mean, you really, Tammy, you really pretty much taught yourself how to write a memoir, didn't you? You went from not, not doing that at all to mm -hmm. teaching yourself and successfully writing that memoir. Mm -hmm. I, I did, I did, I studied it. And there was one book in particular that the literary agent had 
had told me about. So I got it and it was called The Art of Memoir by Mary Carr. Um, that's K-A-R-R. And it's a fabulous book. Mm-hmm. She just had so many tips and tricks in there. She explained it really well, good examples, and it was very helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, she talked a lot about voice and how important that is. And that was that was one of the big tips about it is uh, mm-hmm. voice is important. So I used the dialogue as a way of changing my voice from past and to present. So the dialogue is mostly present voice and and the uh, the rest of the story that digs into the past is is sounds a little different. Mm-hmm. It does. So yeah, and her examples are really good at at teaching me how to do that. That's great, Teresa. Let's talk about voice because um, that's something you and I discuss a lot when we get. Uh, a new client and we've got their book. We right. talk about voice. How how mm-hmm. important is voice to you as a publisher? Number one, it's number one on the list. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Tammy's stories, I relate to so many of them in here, so many of them, and we'll talk about that. But what I love about this is mm-hmm. in having conversation with Tammy, I know how she sounds having conversation with me. You know how she sounds having a conversation. Mm -hmm. So what we aim to do as um, publishers, editors, is to make sure that her reading audience can hear her having the conversation with them as -hmm. she tells the story. So one of the things that I always remember, a good friend of mine said to me one time, Teresa, whether you're messaging me, whether you're sending me... um, you know, you're, you're, whether you're, you're leaving me a message, you know, leaving me a message on my, my uh, cell phone, whether you're writing something to me in an email, whatever is going, or I'm talking to you. I always know that it's you. I always know that it's you. Mm-hmm. So that's what we want to make sure that we do with all of our authors. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, everybody has their little idiosyncrasies and their language and, and whatnot. We have to keep them intact. You know, there are people out there and publishers and editors who will just say, oh, that's not grammatically correct. I am not publishing that. But hey, you know, I have a sister who <laughs> who who talks uh, talks backwards sometimes when she's when she's saying something and she she sounds like Fran Drescher and she's a hoot and a half to listen to. <laughs> so if I'm talking to her on the phone. I I know how she talks. And if I were to have to um, put my experiences with her in a memoir style um, book in the future, I would ruin everything I know about my sister if I made it all grammatically correct, Mm -hmm. you know, or if I lost that, that feel that I get when she's around and she's coming this weekend. So that's probably why I'm talking about her. She's coming to visit this weekend. But the thing is, is it's really important that, you know, um, Tammy's going to have a, a book signing next week. It's really important that when people meet her and hear her talk about what she's written and hear who she is and, and whatever she's going to do during that book signing, that when they get home with their copy of the book, they carry her voice onto off of the pages as they read in the book. Mm-hmm. So that's really important to us. And that's really important to the people who are reading too. You know, it's, everybody has, everybody has a story and everybody tells their story in their own way. And we have to honor that. And that's my, that's our goal to do that. Make sure that we honor that. Yeah. And I I know that when we were uh, doing the editing on, on Tammy's book, one of the things that we talked about was we were not going to touch her voice at all. all. We we left her Mm -hmm. voice totally intact. And that's one of the Mm -hmm. things that, that made her book so great precious yeah yeah absolutely and tammy you talked about uh one of the things that you that you wrote about uh and and you said wrote in your book and you and you told me about was how you had lost what you decided you wanted to write this memoir because you had lost a type of kindness within Mm -hmm. you as you got older Mm -hmm. and you wanted to go back and you wanted to find it 
Where did you drop that thread? When did you stop being the person that you loved when you were younger, that kind person? And so that's what you, why you decided to go in and write that memoir, find it, pick it up and bring it to the end of the book as a rediscovery, which I just, I thought was absolutely fabulous. So when you were writing this book, did you feel the transformation take place? Um, yeah, a little bit, I would say. It's kind of a, it's something that didn't get broken overnight, so it's not going to be fixed overnight either, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a process. But I did definitely learn how to fix the problem by the end of the book, and that's something that's important about any book is that you start out with the main characters in the inner struggle. And then in the middle, you're, you're investigating that you're trying to solve the problem. And then in the end, you conclude with a resolution. So exactly the hero's journey, right? Mm -hmm. And that's um, a really good um format to follow for writing any kind of a book really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. when I wrote my memoir it was about going through cancer treatment um I you you wrote your memoir from essays I wrote mm -hmm. mine from a journal just for those of us who who are watching right now going I have a personal story but I don't know where to start you don't have to have, and I don't have any essays written. You don't necessarily have to have essays like Tammy. You could just have a daily journal mm -hmm. and use your journal and turn it into a memoir, into a book, as long as you have the journey in there. The hero's journey, Campbell's hero's journey, Joseph Campbell. Follow that hero's journey, which Tammy did in her book, and that's what made it so successful so tammy congratulations on your book how does it feel being able to say i'm published i'm published and what advice would you give hopeful authors concerning being published like you uh well i mean it feels really great um it's um it's hard to believe it finally happened because the whole process for me took about three years because I had a lot of learning to do along the way. Mm -hmm. So I had to study not just memoir writing, but any kind of writing and, and figure out the difference between writing personal essays versus writing memoirs. And, you know, some are more technical and memoirs are very, very much from an emotional place. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. I had to learn about all that and and learn about the whole book publishing process because I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about any of it. So I guess my advice to other people who want to do this is be very patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the process. Um, make contacts. Ask questions. And and get guidance from people who have already been there like you guys you guys have helped me tremendously well, thank you thank we you. we aim to we aim to mm -hmm. so tell us about uh your book signing that you're going to do i mean doesn't it feel exciting to be able to say i have a book i have a book that's published i'm a published author i'm going to be doing mm -hmm. a book signing i mean it doesn't just, that just feel so good it feels good but it feels weird <laughs> you're not, it's like am I talking about me no I can't possibly be talking about me but yeah. you are and I'm trying to pick out things to read while mm -hmm. I'm there because they want me to do a reading and the book signing is going to be at the uh the little library in my hometown which is a place that I talk about several times in the book because it was a very important place for me, when I was a child, I, I spent a lot of time in there. And so it is still there in the same place. Of course, it has computers now instead of the little cards that you slip into the envelope in the, the front of the book. 
<laughs> that is so exciting. That so is they so want, exciting. They want me to do a reading. So I'm picking out a couple of things to read about. And then um, my mom is a big part of this book as well. And she grew up in the same town. So she's going to be there with me. And so I already know that there are several people in the community that are very excited about seeing her as well. So she's probably going to steal the show. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I'm sure she is <laughs> proud as punch of you. She is, and you she is can very hold excited. That next to your mom. And that's one of the things about a memoir. You can you can write about your whole family. You have to figure out the subject area that is that is important to the world, basically, because that's who you're writing the book for. But your mm -hmm. whole family is in there. And look at the legacy you're leaving mm -hmm. for everybody else. We have to take a quick break. So uh, don't go away. When we come back, we're going to be talking some more about uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of memoirs with mm -hmm. our, our author, Tammy Hader, who is going to be doing a book signing and our publisher, Teresa Velarde. You are listening to Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Don't go away. We'll be right back. What if dreams can diagnose your life? What if we can meet the love of our life in dreams? Join host Cat O'Keefe Cannabis, the number one internationally best-selling author of Dreams That Can Save Your Life, written with Duke University medical doctor Larry Burke. Dreaming Healing is where we'll explore dreams, research, and interpret dreams from you, the caller. Dreaming Healing Shows can be heard every Tuesday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern with live shows on the first and third evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Come live your dreams out loud with Cat. Omega Institute, offering workshops, retreats, and online learning dedicated to awakening the best in the human spirit. For over 40 years, Omega has seen more than 1 million people come through its doors to grow, learn, and find a greater sense of purpose. Located in Rhinebeck, New York, just 90 miles north of New York City, Omega's natural environment and quiet pace allow for extraordinary experiences to unfold. Learn more at eomega.org or call 800-944-1001. Why are we here? How can we be happy? Questions asked from millennials to boomers. Crappy to happy. Sacred stories of transformational joy answers them using true stories of grit, grace, and love. James Redfield, author of The Celestine Prophecy, wrote in the foreword, This book is a seminar about emerging truths and offers grounded solutions through the art of the comeback. Dr. Bernie Siegel, a contributing author, wrote, Bodies die, but spirits and consciousness survive and recycle. So grab some tissues, open your book, and prepare to cry and laugh till it heals. Crappy to Happy by Reverend Ariel Patricia and Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis. Available from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and booksellers worldwide. Darkest hours to brightest moments. Transformation from despair to happiness. And chaos to clarity. Real people, real pain, real healing. Life-threatening illness, death, Abusive relationships, divorce, and overcoming addiction are challenges these men and women faced head-on. See how they emerged stronger and happier. Buy the new book, Chaos to Clarity, Sacred Stories of Transformational Change by Rev. Patricia Caginello and Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis. Available on sacredstoriespublishing.com and worldwide through Amazon and other retailers. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. Welcome back to Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. I am your host, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, but my friends all call me Kat. And we are talking about writing and writing memoirs and getting them published. Our guests today are Teresa Velarde, 
who is a publisher, and Tammy Hader, who is the author who's getting ready to do a book signing. Her book is now on Amazon. It's in the bookstores. And uh, she's a first time author. And I, I remember when I was a first time author and being able to turn to somebody and say, yes, I am a published author. And I remember going out to the tennis courts with my tennis racket and someone saying, is that Cat Cannabis over there? Isn't she a published author? It, you just puff up like this little bird. <laughs> you just so feel so proud of yourself. You're like, yes, I am a published author. There's no feeling like it, and you and you have you have um, grown into a whole new you. So, uh, Teresa, we we spoke with Tammy about her book, and it is now on Amazon. Uh, so our audience can go and get it. If, if you're not even just interested, let's say you, you're not really interested in reading memoirs, but you have a great story to tell, by reading Tammy's memoir, you're going to figure out how to write yours. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, so yeah. use her memoir as a learning tool. That's what I did when I wrote my memoir as well. Figure out how to make this more than a habit um, or a hobby. A hobby is where your money all goes out into the hobby, okay? Uh, this, when you turn it into a business, which Tammy now has, she's an <laughs> author, she has a business, she's making money off the books. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between a hobby and a business. And she is now a professional writer. Oh, doesn't that feel good? <laughs> it just makes you sit so much taller. <laughs> so Teresa, yes. how can we find you and uh, your publishing company? Um, AuthenticEndeavorsPublishing.com, WeBeBooksPublishing.com, um, Teresa Velarde, Dot com. I mean, you can find me on Facebook. It's Teresa without an H. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. And one of the other things that, um, you know, that we do as publishers is we gather um, stories in um, compilation books. And one of the one of the interesting things that um, I got a little tap on the shoulder from from I call God um, a long time ago to write a series about um good things in the world, like gratitude and hope and kindness and inspiration and whatever else. So, so Tammy actually, and this is another thing that, another tip that I will give you as a publisher and as a writer myself, when you have opportunities to put a piece of yourself, a piece of your story into short books, like A Daily Gift of Gratitude, these are stories about gratitude um, and how people have come through situations that may have looked like there was no end to the pain or the challenge that they were facing. And in the end, they ended up being grateful for that um, in a very short, you know, very few words, like 300 words that Tammy's got a story in here. She's got a story coming in the next one, which the next book in that series is A Daily Gift of Hope. And Kat has one in, in A Daily Gift of Gratitude. She will have one in A Daily Gift of Hope also. So... Anytime you can get yourself published in other um, publications besides your own book and bring a piece of your book into those other publications, they all come back to you, the same person. So people will start reading what you're writing, no matter where it is, they'll look for you. Um, and the one thing that I want to say, one of the things that I want to say, I could say a million things about it, but we'd have to be here till tomorrow. But I'll, I'll tell you right now that this book, you will find something in your own life that you can relate to. There's so many things in this, in this book that just like really touched my heart. Stories about shooting off firecrackers in the street, stories about trying to get a recipe correct that came from a relative who never wrote it down. Um, and the recipes are really good. So if you're at the book signing and you hear her talk about these stories, make sure you buy the book because that's the only way you're getting the recipe. Don't give the recipes out. <laughs> okay. 
So there's good <laughs> stuff in here. There's a lot of good things. Mm-hmm. I went back to some childhood memories myself as I read mm-hmm. this. And that's one of the beauties of the memoir style. You bring people who grew up around the same time as you, who had similar situations happening in their life simply because of the time period that you, you grew up in. And the mm-hmm. relatability is beyond anything that I can tell you. You have to feel it for yourself. So mm-hmm. memoirs, and you did such a brilliant job on this Tammy it's just it's just wonderful and I'm really proud that we are a part of that me and Kat are a part of it so thank you for that we appreciate oh. you oh thank yeah. you what I really loved about your book also Tammy is it was so different from my life because mm. you here your book is all about the, the the town that you grew up in small town that your family grew up in your you had roots there I grew up with no roots. I was a military brat in Europe. I moved, I went to five different first grades, had five different first grade report cards. I moved every two years. I was all over the place. So reading about what it would be like to be, I was an American growing up in a foreign land. So I was a stranger in my own land when I came back. So Mm -hmm. reading about what it was like growing up in this country during that time period in a small town was absolutely fascinating to me. I couldn't believe it. It was like watching Leave it to Beaver on TV, (laughs) which I never saw when I was growing up. I watched all of it as much as I could when I got back to the States. So, um, you know, it's it, it. And that's one of the things about a memoir. Everybody's memoir is going to be different because it's written by different people. So it's mm-hmm. never going to be the same. You can write, read five memoirs and they're all going to be different. Mm-hmm. So one of the other things that I, I always tell um tell people is one of the things, you know, Teresa is so good about this. Uh, when Tammy signed on with us, Teresa immediately put her into this compilation book that she did, which helps promotion. We not only publish the books, we promote them. We mm-hmm. help promote our authors because again, when they're successful, we're really successful. And that's important to us. Mm -hmm. So Tammy, is there, Mm -hmm. are there any last words you'd like to leave with our audience? Um, Well, you know, maybe just a a couple more tips that I got from Mary Carr's book, which one of them is on the order of what you were just talking about. Um, It's being honest about fact versus speculation. Mm -hmm. His memories are subjective to individual filters. So Mm -hmm. Each person you know, sees a situation and circumstances through their own lens. So, and you want to let your audience know that truth can have many layers. And, and my perspective reveals my truth, and your perspective may reveal a different truth. And that way, it helps the reader to go on their own journey, journey even though they're reading about my story. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that truth, you know, that yeah. truth. Yeah, yeah, so and in the book, yeah, and even did you end just, up having dreams about your book while you were writing it? Well, it I didn't so much have dreams about it, but as I would start to fall asleep at night and the, the day's events and things were falling away from my mind, I would start to think about the book if I was in a trouble spot. You know, if I just thought there's a story here, but I just can't get it. I can't get a handle on it. And it was during that almost fall into sleep state that the answer would usually pop into my head. And I think, aha, this is the direction I need to go with that story. And then it will work. Mm-hmm. So that was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that, um, uh, they call that the hypnagogic state of falling mm-hmm. asleep. It's where you're just getting ready to fall asleep. And then all the chatter has gone from the day. All the, all, all the phones aren't ringing anymore. Nobody's calling you. And you can finally speak to you. <laughs> and it comes into your mind. And, and uh, so I really believe our dreams are really important 
in helping us to write our book. Mm -hmm. And writing that book is, is a dream come true. Teresa, we've only got a couple minutes left. Do you have any last uh, bits of, of advice or information you'd like to share with the audience? I would say um, from a selfish perspective, I would, I would recommend um, people read this book. And when I say selfish perspective, because you will get something out of this. Um, as I was talking with Tammy uh, on the interview that I did two weeks, last week, I guess it was, um, with you and Mark, Mm -hmm. I was in my head with all the things as I'm listening to their experiences. Mark's um, a writer's notebook has a lot of stories about things that have happened in his life as well. So the experience of telling stories about things that happened in your life, it's like, oh, all of a sudden they come to life again. It's like, oh, you know, I had a similar circumstance. Uh, my mother was screaming mm -hmm. out the door, screaming my name and my sisters and brothers, you know, and, and. And, um, and, and God forbid you didn't come in the house when dad whistled for you. And we had that conversation on our show. So, mm -hmm. and, and that was a really good show. So if you want to go watch that, it's on um, Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, Conversations That Make a Difference. And that's the other thing, like, tell, talk about your stories. Don't just write them down. So I, that's why I love that Tammy set this up. Um, that she's going to have this um, book signing in the library where she grew up because mm -hmm. now I can just imagine, I would love to be a fly on the wall as those <laughs> stories get intermingled with people who partake, who were actually part of them as they happened. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I just, I'm, I'm inspired to write down some of my stories growing up as a kid and, and the various things that happened in my world um, because the, what you did, Tammy, is so inspiring, and and I know that it's going to inspire a lot of other writers to bring their memoirs to the world. That's all we have, you know. When we leave here, we, that that's part of your legacy. Leave your memories to your family. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us on Dreaming Healing on Dream Vision Seven Radio Network tonight. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Teresa, um, and for all of you out there in the audience. Uh, remember on my Facebook page, if you are interested in my Unmask Your Dreams, Dreams Unmasked, I'm going to be doing the cruise. Uh, and it is on my Facebook page, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, author, speaker, uh, Spirit of the Sea, travel out of uh, San Diego, January 6th through the 13th. And uh, you can uh, call the office, the official office, and uh, which is 800-658-6869. Maybe we can, uh, we can convince Teresa and Tammy to come on and, <laughs> and talk about their books. And uh, just to let everybody know, um, my book, Dreams That Can Save Your Life, has now been translated into Chinese. And the only reason I know that this side is up and the book's not upside down right now is because of the numbers in English right there. But I'm just happy as can be. My book has been translated and everybody can see it. So, um, and also for those of you out there in California, in the desert, look for Desert Health Magazine and all the grocery stores. My article on your seven most common dreams is in there this month. Until next time, everybody remember, everybody dreams, but some dreams save lives. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. And a big thanks to our producer. Tune in next time to Dreaming Healing for more cutting edge research, live dream interpretations, and stories with radio host and award-winning author, Cat O'Keefe Cannabis. Listen every Tuesday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Time with call-in live shows on the first and third evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Remember, everyone dreams, but some dreams save lives. Live your dreams. Find more about Cat at KathleenO'KeefeCannabis.com. That's Kathleen with a K. O-K-E-E-F-E-K-A-N-A-V-O-S or The Queen of Dreams on Google Search. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life 
flow.